Welcome. The first posture we're going to get in today is Virasan Hero Pose. I'm going to use two blocks stacked side by side on their second highest, second tallest height so that my sit bones can sit on those two blocks. And then I'm going to take the feet around block, my feet around the blocks, sit right down on those two blocks and squeeze my heels in towards those blocks. I don't need to touch, they're just kind of moving in that direction. And take a moment here just to spread my toes out. Sometimes I have to actually move the pinky toe off that fourth toe. Rest palms on thighs and really drop weight, my weight back into the sit bones. And just here for a few moments, catching my breath. I'm gonna move into a back bending practice today, uh, preparing for Vibrit Dandasan, which I will be doing a tutorial for later. So this would be a good practice to to do before that tutorial, if you're interested in that posture. Collect your breath in from your belly, up to your chest. You can leave your eyelids open or keep your eyelids closed, just gazing down past the tip of your nose. And notice if you can feel even weight distribution between the two sitting bones. <clears throat> so I can feel kind of a little bit more on my right side, which is, common for me. So I'm just going to try to push down a little bit more evenly into both sides of my sitting region. Take another round of breath here. And then I'm gonna drop the blocks down a level. So I'm actually gonna take one block away and turn the block that's remaining to the lowest height so that it's going across my sit bones with the short ends of the block now, my heels squeezing into the short ends of the block. So it's just a, a little, about an inch lower inch or two lower. And now I can feel a little bit more of a stretch in the front of my ankle, a little bit more in the front of my knee. And just let that settle. If there's any pain, move back to another height. So maybe you need just a little bit higher than this, put a blanket on top of the block. And then again, notice if there's even weight between the two sitting bones. Push down evenly into both of those areas, both sides of your sitting area. And you feel the back of your head lined up with the back of your hips and that might help push some weight back a little. And then just one more big round of breath here. All right, I'm gonna come off the block and move into downward facing dog, just to stretch out the backs of my calves now and the backs of my ankles. So from a tabletop position, I'm gonna walk my hands forward beyond my shoulders so that there's this diagonal line already. And then sitting back to the toes tucked under, heels lifted, and I'm going to really press. And so you can stay here for a few moments if you feel like downward facing dog might be too soon for you at this point in your practice. And then as you feel like your shoulders are warmed up enough to take the weight up off your wrist, you can lift your knees and press your thighs up and back, press your sit bones up, and then you can stretch out the backs of those calves by drawing your heels towards the floor and without dropping your tailbone. So if your heels go down, your tailbone drops, lift the tailbone back up, lift the heels back up, and then just gently draw the heels towards the floor. They don't need to touch. Adho downward facing dog. Press out through each finger, root through each knuckle, and draw your belly button up and lift that low back up nice and high. And 
keep your shoulder muscles engaged, but not so much that they're squeezing up to your ears. There's some softness in the shoulders. All right, let's get this to the top of the mat. So walk your feet up to your hands. Take your feet a little farther apart for a wider forward fold. You can bend your knees a little bit if you need here. And then move your weight into the fronts of your feet so that you're not leaning back to your heels. That'll put way too much pressure on your hamstrings. So put some weight into the fronts of your feet. Again, spread those toes out if you need to use your hands to help. And use your breath to fold into this. Exhale, softening down into the forward fold, Uttanasana. Okay, inhale all the way up to stand, and then take your feet back in together. We're going to move through sun salutation C just to warm up your front hips and your low back, mid back, upper back for the back bend. Inhale, press down into your feet, reach your arms up, forward vahastasan, and then as you exhale, fold, press that weight into the front, the tops of your, the fronts, into the, the front ends of your feet, the balls of your feet. Exhale, then step your left leg back, lower your left knee down. Inhale into a lunge. Hands can come to hips, heart, or ceiling, maybe even hands to thigh. Exhale, then take your hands down to the floor and step back into tabletop pose. Inhale, open your chest. Exhale, round your spine, cat cow. And again, inhale, open. Exhale, round. And one more. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. Inhale, come forward and lower your thighs and hips to the floor. Cobra pose. Squeeze your thighs. Lift your kneecaps off the floor. Press into the palms of your hands. Pull your elbows back even as you're trying to push the elbow crease forward. Try not to let your shoulders lift. Look up to the ceiling. And then come back up into table. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Downward facing dog. And step your left foot up. Lower your right knee down. Hands to hips or left thigh or heart. If it's feeling good to your low back, reach your arms up. If it hurts your low back, skip it. And then exhale, hands to the floor. And step forward, Uttanasana. The weights in the balls of your feet, so the top end of your foot, the front end. Inhale all the way up. This time, reach your arms up or the hastasana after you sweep up from forward fold. Exhale, samastitihi. Inhale, push back down into the heels and balls of your feet as you reach. Exhale, push into the balls of your feet as you fold without lifting your heels. Right foot back. Right knee down. Inhale, Anjaneyasan, low lunge. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step back into tabletop pose. Inhale, dip your belly. Open your chest and gaze up. Exhale, round. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. And one more. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. Good. And then again, you're going to walk your hands forward, take your thighs down, take your hips down, bend your elbows, but pull your hips towards your wrists if you walked your hands forward. So the first one, I didn't do that, um, but it may have felt really tight in your low back. So if you need to, you know, you can right from tabletop, lower down. That's where your hand should be in Bhujangasana. But if you feel like that's way too crunchy in your wrists, take your hands forward, come into the elbow bend and then pull your hips towards your wrists. Pull the mat back with your palms. Engage, lift your thighs, lift your knees. Hips are on the floor, gaze is up, elbows in, chest through and up. And then up and back over tabletop, tuck toes, press up, downward facing dog. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And step your right foot forward, 
Left knee down, low lunge, inhale, and Janayasan. Exhale, take your hands down to the floor, and then step forward, Uttanasan, exhale. Press down into your heels here and the balls of your feet. Inhale all the way up. Samastiti. Exhale, standing pose. Okay, take your feet as close together as you can get them. We're going to move into uh, Parvri Utkatasana, revolved fierce pose. Inhale, bend your knees. Hands can come to heart or hips. And then pull your ribs in slightly so the... Um, normal pose, the traditional pose, you would have a back bend. We're going to twist, so just a little less of a back bend. I'm not saying flatten your back, just a little less. I'll go to the left first so you can see. Hands at heart center. And twist towards your left and maybe hook your right elbow down. If that doesn't hook, back of your right hand, left hand on your hip. Pull your chest through, even as you're turning your left ribs open to the ceiling. Okay. Same thing with prayer pose. Chest moves forward, ribs up to the ceiling. Ten toes point forward. Right knee draws back. And then as you inhale, untwist, step your right leg back. Warrior two, open your arms. So keep that left knee bending straight forward. Inner left thigh rolling back and behind. Press down into your right foot. Stretch your toes apart and then let them land on the floor. Side angle, Uttita Parshva Konasana. Keep that left knee bent right over your left ankle. And you can take your left hand to the floor, maybe a block. Stretch your right arm up overhead. Press it back down into your right foot. And turn your gaze up under your right arm towards your right fingertips. Keep pressing your right knee into your arm. And keep that le uh, or left, knee, left knee into your arm. And keep your left knee over your ankle. So try not to let your knee fall back. Straighten out your left leg, and then left hand can come up to your shin. Open your right arm up to the ceiling. Trigonasana, triangle pose. Squeeze your left knee over to the left and then up so the left knee's not falling in. All right, half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. If you need a block, take a block out under your left hand. Lift your right leg up. Open your right ribs. Take your left ribs through towards the right side of the room. Okay, Garudasan, inhale, come up to stand, wrap your right leg around your left leg, bend your left knee, you can hook your right toes, so sit down into the left heel a lot, right leg is wrapping, so the right arm is going to wrap, lift your elbows, press your thumbs away from your face, squeeze your thighs together. Relax your arms and legs to standing. Unwrap. Samasthitihi. <sighs> Inhale, Ord Vahasthasan. Exhale, Uttanasan. Forward fold. Step or float back, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog or child's pose. And 
And then back up to the top of your mat. Forward fold. Inhale, Ordva Hastasana, all the way up. Samasitihi, standing pose, exhale. So we'll move back into that revolved fierce pose. We're going to twist to the right this time. So bend your knees, hands to hips. Knees point in the direction of the second toes. So the big toes are together. Your knees can be together for the twist, but you know maybe just like the width of your hand or the thickness of your right there between. Okay. Sit down towards your heels. And then again, with that prayer pose, start to twist. And if you can hook the back of your left arm or go down to your elbow, that's fine. But don't let the left knee move forward. Keep chest moving beyond the left shoulder. And then your right ribs rolling up to the ceiling. Good. Then inhale, come up, shoot your left foot back, warrior two, bend your right knee in the direction of your right second toe, open your arms, Virabhadrasa and B, and then press back really strong with that left foot, so that left leg is very strong. Don't let your right knee turn in, right knee moves out to the pinky toe, so your inner right thigh is stretching straight forward, lift from your belly, push your chest up, and then twist your left ribs open. Exhale, side angle, right hand to the floor or a block, left arm overhead. Keep your right knee moving forward and your left foot pressing back. Keep spinning your left ribs open and track that left arm gaze up. So you can see the left arm straightening at an angle so it's not bending overhead or flopping or drooping. And keep pushing your right arm in, your right leg into your right arm. Okay, Trikonasan. You can take your left hand down to find your balance. Straighten out that right leg. Right hand to your shin. Left arm up to the ceiling. Squeeze your right thigh. Pull that right kneecap up. And then again, don't let it fall in. Keep turning it over to the right. Keep pressing down into your left heel. And feel the stretch on your outer left hip. Ardhachandrasan, half moon, shift forward, diagonally out from your right pinky toe, land on your right hand, block or fingertips, left arm up to the ceiling. Again, turn your ribs, right ribs under, left ribs up. <clears throat> Squeeze your right thigh, keep rolling the right knee open. Garudasana, and then eagle pose, come up to stand, wrap your left leg around your right leg as you bend your right knee a lot. Keep the right knee pointing straight forward, the left knee over towards the right side of the room. Left arm is going to wrap under. Eagle pose, Garudasana, squeeze your sit bones towards the right heel. Lift your elbows, press your forearms away from your face. Pull the shoulder blades in a little and down. Not a lot, it's on a really forceful pull. And then unwrap and come to stand. Tadasan, mountain pose. Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Step or float back through your Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, either child's pose or downward facing dog.
Mm -hmm. Breathe in, he'll come back up into downward facing dog if you're in child's pose. Okay, lift your left leg, sweep it up. And then step your left foot through the top of your mat for high lunge. <clears throat> Bend your left knee forward, push your right heel up, but press your toes back. So your toes are trying to push the mat back even as you're trying to squeeze the mat together with your legs. And then come up to stand and catch your right leg with your left hand on the knee or the outside of your right foot and push your right foot forward. Squeeze your inner thighs together and then reach your right arm back. You can twist, follow with your gaze if you feel confident in your balance. And then land back on your right foot, back into that high lunge. Exhale, twist to your left. Right elbow hooks your left thigh. Keep pressing that left knee forward and push down into your left heel. Squeeze your right thigh to lift your right kneecap. Release. Okay, hands can come down. You can take a chaturanga here. You can sweep back up into three leg dog. Open your hip. Um, if you worked on that chin stand, Ganda Berundasan, that tutorial we did before, you can play with that. Elbows bend, chin to the floor, lightly grazing. And chaturanga. Inhale up dog. Exhale. Whew, downward facing dog or child's pose. All right, inhale. Back up to down dog. Exhale. Right leg, inhale, float it up. And then as you exhale, step your right foot through the top of your mat, high lunge. <clears throat> Again, bend your right knee forward. Press back with your left toes to lift your left heel up. And then imagine you can pull the mat together with your thighs. Prashtachandrasan, high lunge. Right, again, we're going to come up to stand and catch the right leg with or left leg with your right hand. So you can take your right hand to left knee and twist, or you can gra grab the outside that left foot, push your left leg forward, squeeze your thighs together, and then twist. Commit to the bottom of that right foot. So it's holding you up. <laughs> Trying to hold you up. <laughs> lift your chest. Lift your belly. It'll help. And then sweep that left leg back into high lunge. Fix your feet if they got wonky like mine did. Inhale. Reach your arms. And then exhale, twist. Left elbow hooks, right thigh. Again, keep that right knee going straight forward. Lift your left kneecap by squeezing your left thigh. Push your right sit bone down so that your right hip doesn't lift up. If your right hip is lifting, your right knee is pulling back. Right knee should be going forward so the right hip can drop. 
and then lift the left hip. And then again, you can take your hands down and sweep that right leg up, open the hip, stretch it out. And take that chaturanga vinyasa, chin stand, whatever you did on the first side. Inhale up dog if you haven't already. And exhale, it's time, let's come into Virasan. So you can sit back down between your heels. Get the pinky toes off the fourth toe. You can use a blanket here or a block. I'm gonna use a blanket so that I'm gonna lie back into um, Supta Virasan and just have a little support. Okay, so you can start in the upright position. You can stay in the upright position, but if it's available for you, you can recline back into Supta Virasan, and you can always use blocks for your upper back here. The trick is just to get them in the right place. Moving into this posture isn't always easy without blocks and hoping that they land in the right spot. There we go. So it's a little high for me. Better. And then you could have a block under your head. All right. Let's make like that. If you're on the floor, completely in a supine position without the blocks, reach your arms above head and flip your palms up to the ceiling, and then actively press down into your knees and push your hips up to the ceiling in either variation. Okay, so when you get about 10 breaths in there, you can come up off your blocks or off the floor. <clears throat> and then come onto your back. <clears throat> Excuse me. I forgot I got my throat. Bridge posture, so Siddhu um, Bandha Sarvangasan, supported bridge pose. Yeah. I don't even need to know what's going on. It's fine. Just wing it. All right, bridge pose, heels up to your sit bones. Press down into the floor with your heels, and then you're gonna push into the floor with your shoulders. So right away, you know, your hands are on the floor, your shoulders press down into the floor. And maybe right here, the shoulders even come together, and you can feel the back bend here. So if you can see, I've got this arch, right? And then lift your hips and press the weight back down into your shoulders, not your head, so that your knees come back over your heels. And then you can interlace your hands. Keep pressing forward with your feet so that your knees aren't bending and collapsing at the ankles, right? So keep pushing forward with your feet. Lift those thigh bones and hip bones up to the ceiling and keep pushing down into your shoulders, your arms as well. Okay, release down, coming down to your butt, and then let your back relax. Let your knees rest against each other. And then Ordva Dhanurasana, if you want to take this into upward bow or wheel, this is what most people call it, but it's an upward bow. Um, you can take your hands on the floor under your shoulders and start to press up off your head to your hands and feet. And then also revisit bridge pose. That's a great option. If you have any props at home that you can use for your wheel pose, maybe you want to put a chair or come sitting in a chair and then lean back over that. 
or a stability ball is a good thing to sit on and then take a back bend. When you're ready, when I'm ready. Okay, and then come out of that nice and slow. Don't need to be in that any longer and you just feel like it's serving its purpose. It's better to take three or four short bursts in that posture than to be in that pose. For five breaths, I've been there, done that in a workshop I attended way back when I was a young little yogi. Stupid guy had me in a, that pose for like three minutes demonstrating, came out of it and these three fingers were numb for like two weeks. And ever since then I've had carpal tunnel issues. So don't do it. Okay, and then from here we'll move into a little bit of a twist. So you're going to pull your right knee into your chest. And then roll off to your left. Right knee comes over to the left. You can keep your right knee bent if you want, or you can straighten out your right leg and catch your um, right foot with your left hand. So when I do that, I can feel though like I start to roll back at it on the diagonal. So I just crawled my left shoulder through to my right foot so that my head is more in line with my sit bones not over here on the edge of my mat. So I don't want my hips and my head in a diagonal line. I want them pretty straight. Okay, and then bend that right knee back. If it was straight, pull yourself back over. You might have to crawl your shoulders back over to the middle of your mat again. Knee into your chest. Again, Ardha Apanasan. Half or one leg, half knee to chest when relieving pose. Okay, switch sides. Right leg out, left knee in for that half when relieving pose or one knee to chest. Ardha Apanasan. Okay, and then I'm going to use my right hand to take my left knee off to the right. And again, I'm going to roll over to my right hip. So if my head stays back and my shoulders stay back, I'm going to feel crunchy in my back. So I'm going to crawl my right shoulder through so my head can come in line with my hips more. And then my right hand can come down to my left foot a little easier that way if that's something that you want to take. If you've got left leg straight, right hand to foot, just think it's gentle rolling the left hip down towards the right heel. If you do it too much, it's going to grind your processes in the spine. You don't want that. It's almost like you're squeezing your inner thighs together more. Think that more rather than pushing the left hip away from you. Squeeze your inner thighs together. And that'll get a little IT band stretch for you. It feels good. The outer left hip, if you feel tight in that hip area. Okay, and then re-bend your left knee, <clears throat> roll back over to your back. You may have to crawl your shoulders back over. Again, that one leg knee to chest. Squeeze. And then both knees, apanasan, when relieving pose. Squeeze. And you can rock and roll up and down to seated. And we'll take seated forward fold, pachamuthanasana. <clears throat> so you can use anything to sit on if you need bolsters or blankets. The thing where you pull your butt out, don't do that. It's actually really bad. So if anything, you're going to lift and get your butt back under your sit bones where they're supposed to be, where it's supposed to be. And um, then if any adjustments are going to be made, you're going to actually scoot your butt out behind you rather than pull your cheeks out from under. So scooch the butt out back that way. So if anything, pull them up so it's like in, up, behind, not it's awful. And stretch out over your legs. Get off my pedestal. Press out through your inner big toe mounds and pull back with your pinky toe side of your foot. And then again, push those sit bones out behind you. Shoot them back far. Chest in the opposite direction. Directions. So butt stretches back, chest towards toes.
Okay, inhale, come back up to seated. And take your feet in and off to the left so that you can your knees just come down to the floor, staggered legs, and then you're gonna twist to your right. Lift your left sit bone up off the floor and take your left ribs towards the right side of the room. Look over your right shoulder. Pull your right shoulder back in so it's not coming to your chin. All right, and then come out of that and then take your feet off to the left. Knees just stagger down to the floor and then you're gonna twist to your left. Again, take the left or the right ribs towards the left side of the room, lift your chest and then that left shoulder opens, look over your left shoulder. I like to be on fingertips here. You can put a block under your hand. And then inhale, release. And then come back down onto your back. <clears throat> and hug your knees back into your chest. And then take your feet up, little legs in the air pose. Press down into your low back on the floor, the sacrum. Your low back has just got its natural little curve. So you're not really pressing the low back down. You're pressing down into the sacrum, but zipping your belly button in towards your spine. So the mid back is on the floor, but the low back is just neutral. So instead use the muscles right in the solar plexus area, not in your belly button. So right here around the ribs to push down into the floor. It's kind of hard to access that and only that. Okay, you can stay here for the next few moments or take this up into shoulder stand. Lift your hips up over your shoulders. Elbows behind you. Press your hands up as high as you can get them on your back. Chin towards chest. Feet to the ceiling. Keep pushing into your back with your hands and the floor with your elbows and your shoulders, pushing down, not your head. All right, toes overhead, plow pose, interlace your fingers if your toes touch. Keep your thighs engaged so your kneecaps are lifting, not collapsing down. Keep pressing your toes into the floor. Okay, roll out of this and then come right up to seated. And if you can take Lotus, set up for Lotus, or half lotus, right? So either right heel to left hip crease for half lotus or both heels, right heel up to left, left heel up to right. And just sit here for a moment. And then if you want to take the bind here, yoga mudra in left hand to left foot. It does not feel like it's left hand to left foot when you get there. It's weird. I'm going to have to bend forward, though, and then take my right hand around to my right foot. If I can get it today. And then forward, fold down to the floor with your chin coming towards the floor.
Mm -hmm. Now come back up. Alternatively, you could have just grabbed your um, opposite biceps. I should have said that first. So if you want to go back and try that, <laughs> it's a mindful modification. Okay, and then release when you're done and sit here for just a moment. All right, and then you can release this as you're ready and take a rest. So you can come back into Shavasan. Situate yourself in any props. So if you want to take a supported fish pose or a supported back bend, I'm going to roll up a bolster, a blanket. I'm going to put this underneath my shoulder blades so that my shoulders come down to the floor. Actually, I'm going to land in a recline bound angle here. Soles the feet for me together, knees apart. You can take anything that feels good to you. And just take your time here and rest. Let your breath calm down. Let your body relax slowly but surely. That's why I'm using the props because I like to feel how my body at first is like still in action mode. Once I get these, once I get myself on the, on the props, and then after a few rounds of breath, I can feel those areas just relaxing down into the props. It's just an awareness practice, really, for me. Not not so much a sensation chasing experience, but really feeling the awareness of those body props. Because I know this is the place that I like to rip up hips and shoulders, especially shoulders for me. So just noticing as your your areas relax with your breath. And think about where else in your daily life you could practice that relaxation within reason, of course. You know, driving. Don't want to be too relaxed, but you've got, you know, awareness of if you're of if you're extra grippy on the steering wheel or with your shoulders. So take your time here, finish out your relaxation as long as you've got. And of course, as always, take a bow to yourself when you finish your practice and tell yourself thank you and good job. Thanks for practicing with me. <laughs>